Welcome to Oskaloosa. I have Mahaska County Attorney Andrew Ritlin. Thanks for being on the show here today. Thanks for inviting me. Well, you had recently presented a press release that talks about restitution for crime victims. Uh, that's right. Uh, can you kind of give us a little brief history as to why you felt this was something that needed to be talked about, maybe even fixed and changed? Sure. So I've been a prosecutor for going on eight, nine years now, uh, and I've handled over a thousand cases. Uh, and many of those cases have substantial victim restitution attached. So if someone uh, has a medical bill that isn't paid, or if someone has property damage, uh, that a defendant has, uh, you know, damaged in some way, uh, the court will order restitution to that victim as part of the criminal case. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of those times, offenders don't pay that victim restitution, even though they're court ordered. Uh, so you find a lot of times victims are um, kind of sh left shorthanded, so to speak. Uh, there's a lot of restitution that are owed to them that isn't paid to them. So I, this has always kind of been a frustration of mine. Uh, under the current system, uh, there are basically a two-track um, way that that delinquent court debt is collected. Uh, one is through a county attorney collection program. Uh, that's something I just started here in Mahaska County. Uh, a county attorney collection program will handle all the collections of delinquent court debt uh, from the time the program is instituted till the end. So, for example, uh, if someone is like 30 pay days past due, uh, they'll come to the clerk of court, uh, they'll pay on that case, and then we'll make sure they're continuing to pay. Uh, however, many counties in the state of Iowa, about a third, don't have a county attorney collection program. Uh, for those counties, it's an out-of-state uh, Texas-based uh, debt collection company, uh, Linebargers, uh, and they will handle the collection efforts. Uh, and there have been issues with victims getting paid, um, so that's why I really was um, kind of interested in this issue. Mm -hmm. You and I just off camera before we started, we kind of you had mentioned that you had talked to the clerk of courts. So. And there was a kind of an amazing figure. Can you kind of tell us what we're looking at here? Sure. So um, I went to the clerk of court to see how many cases have still outstanding victim restitution. So this isn't fines or fees or surcharges. This is actual uh, money that's owed to victims. Uh, currently in Mahaska County, there's around $2.9 million uh, that are owed to victims since electronic record keeping. So we're probably going back 20 20 plus years. Um, of that uh, 2.9 million, uh, about 2.7 million have been paid. So you're looking at about $200,000 that offenders have paid over around 755 cases. So the point is that there's a lot of victims out there who are not receiving the full amount of restitution, even though it's court ordered. And the reason why that's so important is because when a case is handled by line barters, that private collection company, uh, they, like I said, charge a collection fee. That collection fee is taken off the top of every payment. So for example, well, let's say an offender comes in and pays $100 on their case that, to go to victim restitution. Line barters automatically takes $25 from that amount, and the rest, the 75, goes to the victim. Now, in theory, uh, if the defendant pays the full amount that they're ordered, the victim will get all the money that they're due. But the problem is, and the problem in Mahaska has been, uh, that often offenders don't pay the full amount. So what that effectively means is that the victim is paying for the cost of private collections. So let's say, for example, a defendant is ordered to pay $2,000 on a case. Uh, but let's say he only spends or only pays $1,000. Uh, what will happen in that scenario under a private collection, the victim will get $750, the uh, collection agency will get $250, and in that scenario, it's the victim that's paying, you see? Because right. it actually was $1,000 paid. Uh, but there's even a bigger problem, in my view, uh, is that, uh, particularly with private collections, uh, they will collect that collection fee even if they've done nothing to collect on a case at all because they're automatically assigned to the case. So if, for example, uh, a defendant uh, takes responsibility, uh, wants to pay his fines, pay his debts back to society, uh, goes in voluntarily and starts paying on his case, right? Like we all hope he would. Uh, even in that scenario, uh, that private collection company will still get a cut of that money even though they've done nothing 
to trigger that payment. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So it's got automatic fee. So it's not as though the defendant was delinquent and then that company was brought in to make that collection. They're, they're automatically assigned it and they get 25% right off the top. Yes. So anytime there is a, uh, a court order to pay fines, fees, victim restitution, and 30 days have passed, it'll automatically be assigned to a collection agency, either the county attorney program uh, or a private debt collector. Now, if it's assigned to a county attorney program, there's no collection fee charged. It's still the same amount that they were ordered to pay originally. But if it's a private debt collector, they add on 25% to the total. And then now, uh, anytime there's a payment made, even if they do nothing on the case, they get a cut of the money. You see. So kind of there's that the stick end of this. So how do you, as the collection agent in this, how do you bring people to say, hey, I better pay this or the things are getting worse? Certainly. So for a, from a county attorney perspective, uh, we have a lot of tools. We'll usually uh, try to get people to sign voluntary uh, payment agreements. Uh, if that fails, uh, we have a couple of tools like wage garnishments. Uh, there can be license suspensions uh, for certain tickets. Uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, we just want a uh, defendant to take responsibility and pay their debt. And most do. A lot of them do. Uh, and line bargers similarly will do like garnishments, for example, to get them to pay. Uh, but to me, the, the, the real um, important part of the issue uh, is that uh, under a private collection system, it's the victims who are paying the cost of that system, not defendants, if they aren't fully paid. And under a county attorney collection program, everything we collect, 100%, will go to the victim uh, before anything else is paid. So victims are treated very differently uh, depending on the county that you're in. And that, to me, is just wrong. Right. So how much, or any, extra work does this mean for the county attorney's office? Uh, well, for our office, we started on uh, July 1st of 2019. Um, we have hired and brought on an assistant county attorney who's you know, probably 50% of his time is dedicated to collections. Uh, so it is a lot of effort, um, and it's important work. And part of the reason, uh, a large majority of the reason why I wanted to start a collection program here in Mahaska is to enable crime victims to receive more money faster. Because if we were to continue the system of private collections, like a third of the counties in Iowa, uh, victims would be effectively paying for the cost of private collections. And I just don't think that's right. So we'll kind of recap this a little bit, but have we missed anything? Help, you know, maybe residents better understand why. I mean, it's important, of course, for, for victims. And, county, and you've explained the cost for county residents. Is there anything else that we've missed that should, we should maybe touch on? Uh, certainly. So uh, I would absolutely encourage those individuals uh, who've had cases recently in Mahaska County and who owe uh, money on those cases uh, to come to our office. Uh, because we are trying to help these individuals uh, pay back their fines and fees. And not only that, many times if you owe money on a traffic case, for example, uh, it could suspend your license. Uh, but our office can help you get back your license uh, even if you haven't paid off the full amount. So as long as you're paying uh, your monthly agreement, uh, you can keep your license and keep your job and hopefully be in a better spot. Um, so we're there to help uh, offenders pay back what they owe, and we're also there to help victims uh, get the money that they're due. So I would encourage anyone to come to our office so that we can help them. Uh, yes, so if you believe it's not right that crime victims have to pay the cost of private collections, if you think that crime victims should be paid first rather than a private debt collector, uh, I would strongly encourage you to contact your local representative. Um, there is interest uh, among the legislature to address this problem, uh, but they really need to hear from the constituents, uh, the people who are most affected. Uh, and a lot of the counties that are affected are in southeast Iowa. I mean, it's Wapalo, it's Keokuk, it's Appanoose, it's Monroe. Uh, all the counties around us are confronting this issue. So uh, my view is, uh, you know, we should try to achieve justice for victims everywhere. So I would encourage those people who think this is a, a system that needs to change to contact your uh, local representative and tell them this is important to you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Andrew. That was great to uh, kind of catch up on a program that you guys are doing yeah, at the county attorney's office. So, all righty, folks. Once again, we thank Andrew Ritland for stopping in, and we'll be back.